friends, I'm Mrs. Spinoza. I'm a kinder teacher here in Houston. And today I just want to talk about what it's been like teaching during this pandemic. So I'm going to go ahead and answer a series of 10 questions. And the first question is, are you teaching in person, hybrid, virtually? Explain how it works. So we actually started out virtually for the first six weeks of school. We started on August 24th. And since I knew that only six weeks were going to be virtual, I was mentally prepared for the suckiness that came along with it. I absolutely hated being virtual. And the main reason I had a problem with it was because I knew that my students were not truly learning. My school is located in one of the most diverse areas in Houston, and it is an immigrant community. So most of my students are English language learners, and most of them have siblings. I had to keep my kids on mute all the time because there was just so much background noise. Whenever they unmuted, I could hear their siblings' teacher's class going on. So there was just very little students that actually participated because they were in an environment where they could actually participate. And I kept my routine really simple the first, those first six weeks. I used my document camera and my students live within walking distance of school. So they had no problem coming to pick up work. They came to pick up some of their packets and notebooks, supplies. And that's how we powered through the first six weeks. Oh, and another thing I did forget to mention about the first six weeks is that the district allowed teachers to choose if they wanted to teach from home virtually during those six weeks, or we also had the choice to come to the classroom and teach virtually, which is what I chose. I'm lucky that I do have office space where I can work from, but I was just so tired of being at home and I just felt like it was gonna be even less motivating if I just stayed at home. So I did teach for my classroom those first six weeks just so I could at least get in the groove of waking up and coming to work for whenever we transition to hybrid teaching. And then finally, we started hybrid teaching on October 19th. And I've only had four students that have remained virtual. The rest of my students have been in class, still doing that same procedure with my online students. I make sure that I have work for next week ready and they come pick it up. So that's just what has worked best for me. I'm still very much paper-based. I've been trying to make it as normal as possible. And I've had some students that have had to quarantine at home, but we haven't had any cases in my classroom or in our school. So we've been really lucky with that. The second question is on a scale of one to 10, how do you think you are doing? It's really hard not to compare yourself to other teachers. And it just always feels like you are not doing enough but I know that I am doing my best, so I don't know, maybe like a seven. The third question is, what is one positive thing about the teaching format? And for me, it is definitely my classroom size. I have 15 kids this year, which is so beautiful because last year, I had 25 kindergartners. Last year was also my first year teaching kindergarten. So I was literally crying like the first two, three months of school. So out of my 15 students, 11 are in person. And like I mentioned, only four are online. So it's been super manageable with a small classroom size. Fourth question is, what is one thing that you are rocking while teaching during a pandemic? And for me, I would say, trying to keep up with these teacher vlogs because I started in May. It's a very interesting year to capture. I know I'm gonna look back and just be super thankful that I made it through this. Question number five is, what is one challenge you faced and how have you overcome it? So as I mentioned, I have mostly English language learners in my classroom, so communicating with parents is tricky. Out of my 15 students, I only have four native speakers and then my other 11 students, amongst them, they speak Spanish, Farsi, Pashto, Dari, Bengali. Oh, this last one I always mispronounce, Amharic. Some parents do speak a little bit of English, but it's still pretty difficult to communicate. But I did discover an awesome free app called Talking Points, and I'm gonna link that in the description. If you are struggling to communicate with parents because of language barriers, I highly recommend this app. It is free and they have over 100 languages to select from. Parents don't need to download the app. It's probably best if you as a teacher download the app and all you need are the parent phone numbers, their names, and it adds them to a list list and you can send individual text messages and you pick what language they speak at home. So you type your message in English and it will automatically translate it. 
and then the parent can respond in their language and it will come back to you in English. So that's super awesome. Question number six is, what is one thing that has made teaching easier for you during a pandemic? I definitely could not be teaching without a document camera and luckily I did not have to buy my own. I already had one in my classroom. I use my laptop to log into Microsoft Teams, then I screen share my document camera, and then I use my iPad to log into Microsoft Teams and see and hear my online kids. And question number seven, what is one change you have made that you will continue when the pandemic ends? And I think for me, it's going to be the document camera. It is way easier to teach whole group using a document camera and I can't believe like I didn't do this before. Question number eight is what has been your favorite purchase during the pandemic? Since most of my students have iPads that have been supplied by our school district, I went ahead and bought some iPad chargers and I got them off of Amazon and it's like a two pack of these and what I loved is that they have the double USB port so you can charge two iPads at a time. But my kids have been pretty good about charging their iPads. What I do need are headphones. Our school ordered headphones for the students, but they still haven't come in. Then question number nine is, how have you been taking care of yourself? So setting those school, work, home boundaries, I think is very important as teachers. Personally, I usually stay after school Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So on those days, if I have copies or just any kind of classroom prep that I need to do, I do it on those days and I try not to stay past 6 p.m. And then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I finally went back to the YMCA. Finally started going back during Thanksgiving break actually. And right now I'm just doing like the minimum of at least two days per week. So Tuesdays and Thursdays, I leave school right after dismissal. And what I do miss about the gym though is the steam room. I remember I got really, really sick last school year during Thanksgiving break, I was sick that whole week. I had body aches, this horrible cough, and my nose was really stuffy. And I read that, you know, sitting in a steam room will help clear up your sinuses. So I did that. That became like my favorite part about going to the gym is just sitting in that steam room at the end of a workout. And I love taking naps whenever. So that's how I take care of myself. And the final question is, what's making you happy during this time? For me, it is DoorDash. My hubby and I did not start using DoorDash until this pandemic. I'm just not a person that enjoys cooking and some weeks I can have it together where I actually cook, but these past months I have not been cooking very much. We are pretty frequent DoorDashers now. We do try to order from restaurants that have sustainable packaging, like they will package their things in paper to-go boxes versus styrofoam and a paper bag versus a plastic bag. We refuse any extra sauces, any plastic wear. But I got through my 10 questions now. If you are also a teacher that vlogs, I would love to hear you answer these 10 questions as well. And if you do not have your own channel, you can go ahead and share in the comments. I would love to hear what your experience has been like. That is all I wanted to share. We are halfway there, y'all. We're gonna make it. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you are a pre-K or kinder teacher. I hope you all stay safe and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks.